In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. One of the things that is a constant in all four Gospels is that the story of Jesus begins with a story about John the Baptist. All four Gospels say that there was something about John and his ministry that was the beginning of what they all call the good news, the euangelion, the good news of the gospel. And it begins with this rather strange man. Now, in, uh, in Luke's passage that we heard today, he has omitted the physical description of John the Baptist that occurs in Mark and Matthew. We're told in Mark and Matthew that uh, he wore a camel hair shirt with, uh, well, with a leather belt made to remind us of the great prophet Elijah. But Luke, what Luke uh, has earlier in the story of John the Baptist's birth was his mother made a vow that, uh, quote, he would, a razor would never touch his head. He, that was to make him a, what was called a Nazarite from birth. Normally when you're a Nazarite, you take a vow, you cut off all your hair, and then you don't cut it again for the period of your vow. She made a lifetime vow for him. The, the point being, if this was true, here was a man in his 20s or 30s who'd never had a haircut. And just think of what he must have looked like. I'm sure. You know, the point would be, he got their attention. I mean, this wild man coming out of the desert, hanging around the River Jordan, telling Jews that they had to be baptized because of their sinful ways. Unheard of. But it got their attention. It certainly got their attention. And all of the uh, all of the writers also, when they talk about John the Baptist, they quote from the, 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 from, uh, the prophet Isaiah in the 40th chapter, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now that original prophecy was directed to um, actually build, it was physically describing a highway that would be built from Babylon to Jerusalem for the Jewish exiles to return home. That was the original meaning of it. And we heard that again in Baruch, where he quite, quite literally says, we're going to build this highway across the desert, we're going to knock down all the hills, fill in all the valleys, and there'll be a straight highway. Now, obviously, they didn't do it, and you couldn't do it. But it was a metaphor for God is preparing the way for God's people to come home, to be saved. So now we have John the Baptist in the wilderness, who is this voice saying, make, make straight the way of the Lord. And most people have, at least in my lifetime, have interpreted that to say, well, now the road is not really a literal highway across the desert. It's... it's we're supposed to make straight a path for God in our hearts. And that's not entirely wrong. But it kind of shortchanges what John the Baptist was all about. Because it makes it sound like, well, if you or me or whatever, we just straighten up a little bit, that's all we really need to do. Straighten up. Don't do bad things. And it's, actually, that's part of what he's saying. But it isn't all of what he's saying. Now next week, so I don't want, I don't want I, Bill Belay will probably be here to preach, so I don't want to steal his sermon, but we'll hear what John the Baptist is actually saying. And it's not, uh, a, a, uh, it's not something about just what you or I personally need to do to be better people. It's much stronger than that. In, in our, particularly in, in our country, in our time, a lot of our thinking about what sin is has kind of condensed down to just little personal things, sometimes big personal things, but always personal and private 
most of the time. Now, there's a history behind some of that. But when we went into the, the Reformation and what came out, we had all kinds of different ideas about how people should live a Christian life, from very conservative to radical. And um, the radical Reformation, particularly what became the Baptist tradition and all that, really emphasized a personal relationship with God and individual purity. That was kind of their thing. Um, which wasn't entirely wrong, but it was, again, it was an, a bit of an overemphasis, I think. But after the two great awakenings in this country that kind of created what we now call evangelicalism, it really took a turn towards just very personal ideas of what sin is. Um, part of that, I think, well, had to do with how successful churches like ours were up until that time. Uh, the... Uh, the evangelicals and the Roman Catholics and the like had no power in this country for years and years. It was the mainline Protestant churches, the Episcopal Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Congregational Church, eventually Methodist and the like. That's where all the political power was. So um, evangelical churches really couldn't say we need to change society. So they really focused on we're going to change our our personal behavior and the big focus I remember when I was growing up the focus was no drinking no dancing now, I don't know if you guys ever remember any of that that was somehow going to save the world if we would just not drink and not dance um, today you hear a very similar thing although it, it's all focused on our sexual behavior right no abortions um, no homosexuality if we just do that everything will be fine um, and it's, it's a truncation of what the actual message was. John the Baptist was looking at not just what people personally did in their private lives, but the whole society, and he found it broken. There were a few people who were getting very rich and wealthy at the expense of most people who struggled very hard and didn't have much to show for it. There was hunger, homelessness, violence. You probably... We still have these today. But that was what was going on then. And what was the religious leadership doing? Well, they were doing everything but dealing with those issues. They had become to focus on, on following the Mosaic law, particularly the dietary laws and the sab Sabbath laws, with absolute strictness. And somehow that was going to fix everything. And this is what... Jesus particularly came to, to correct, you know, was that the kingdom of God that he came to proclaim was all about creating a, a just, righteous, and loving, well community here on earth. That's what it was about. Not, not suffer and have a terrible life and then when you die you get to go somewhere where it's warm all the time but really coming to get us to change our ways so that every person in the world is treated with justness kindness fairness etc john the baptist first came to get our attention it was look around Look at how far sin has come and has broken us. And now, what are you going to do to change it? The baptism of repentance in the Jordan River was not just a simple symbolic act, right? People were to confess their sins and repent. And the repent, word repent meant change your mind, change your way of living. That's what he was talking about. To get ready for the big Jesus event where Jesus would come and, and bring the kingdom of God with him, the people needed to pay attention. John the Baptist got their attention. Now the good thing I think about Advent and in our lives is it's designed every year once again to get our attention. And rather than think of this simply as a time to collect presents and put up decorations around the house and all those things because Christmas is coming soon, we also need to pay attention. Is the world we live in and the lives we are leading, are they really the ones that God is calling us to live in? 
And if not, what are we going to do to be part of God's plan of reconciliation? Are we going to ignore it and pretend it's not there? Or are we going to repent and change our lives and convince, help to convince other people to change their lives so that this world will look more like the kingdom of God that Jesus came to proclaim than it does? This is a time for us to take stock, to get their attention so that we are ready, ready not just for Christmas, ready for the lives that God has called us to. The actual origin of Advent, by the way, is not a preparation for Christmas. The actual origin of Advent is a preparation for Epiphany, when it was a baptismal feast, when people were preparing to either take their baptismal vows or to reconfirm their baptismal vows. All about who are we, what kind of lives are we living, living, how is God's plan for the world working through us. This is what Advent is calling us to do again. Get our attention. Take stock of what God is doing in the world and make our commitment to be a part of God's team, God's plan, God's good news. Amen.